Hello everyone, Dan 14th Prime here. I want to do a video share today with you guys with the Hot Toys Star Wars Masterpiece 515. This is of course the classic Stormtrooper as seen in the original trilogy, now episodes 4 through 6. They have done a Stormtrooper in the past, so this is a bit of an update. They don't tag it to a specific movie, but really in how they've detailed some elements of the figure, plus in all the promotional pics, it really seems geared more towards Return of the Jedi. If you're interested in checking out the box and pack out for this figure, be sure to check out my Instagram, same handle, Dan14ThPrime. Pretty typical Star Wars packaging, but a beautiful insert you'll have to see. And this is the deluxe version, which does include a special accent on the box. As I mentioned, this is the deluxe version, which means it comes with this big Star Wars Death Star looking back panel. It lights up, as you can see. It's got a cardboard insert detailing some on the back. The regular version of this figure runs about $190, and this deluxe version is a little over $240. If you're interested in picking either of those versions up, check the link down in the description below. I'll jump you out to the sideshow. You can check out all the professional picks, check pricing and availability, and get your order in. As usual, any shopping you do through those links below supports the channel at no cost to you and is very much appreciated. Personally, I went for the deluxe because I like these little extras that add a little something to the figure that we don't get really often enough from Hot Toys to create a full diorama or display sort of look to an environment. And I've got another of these guys on order that should be coming soon so I can do a little troop building with these guys because they can really make a display look like those scenes in the movie. But let's jump in closer and check this figure out. So let me start off with the light up panel since I've got it out and lit up. It's about 15 inches tall, about an inch thick. Fits very snugly and nicely into a detolf. Leaves only maybe a quarter to a half inch space up top so you get a nice fill to the height of the detolf. Very much looks like a, you know, a background that you'd find in a lot of Star Wars scenes. Maybe on a Star Destroyer, maybe the Death Star. So very recognizable design. There's a profile view of it, like I said, about an inch thick. Has a little foot back there on the back, so it can stand alone by itself. And you might notice some little clips coming off the front there. Those attach to the base, I'll show you that in a second. Here I think it's cool, even if you didn't want to use the light up side, they give you a cardboard insert on the back side. It also gives you a bit of a Star Wars deco. Less iconic, but definitely, you know, fits the scene. So if you didn't want that, you could use this version. My one complaint on this side is this is like a cardboard insert that goes underneath some hooks. Really tight, and the more you move this, the more wear goes on the cardboard insert. I can already see my edges kind of getting worn. So that's a bit frustrating. I wish it could have maybe just magnetized or just fit some other way on the back. Or maybe just have this be something other than kind of cheap cardboard. But what I'm pulling up there is the switch. So you always have to move this thing to get to the switch just to turn that off. And even just up here is the battery panel. I take that off, it takes, I believe, three AAA batteries. And then here, since I've turned it off, just flip it back around to the front. This is the look with the lights off. Let me do a little split screen here, show you one lights on, lights off. You can see the comparison. I think then the other thing to show you that accompanies this, of course, is you know your regular base, Star Wars Stormtrooper. Again, kind of a, you know, whatever. Spaceship, Star Destroyer themed floor on this thing. And it has, you know, a couple of hooks right here, hook grabbers to go in those hooks there. Pretty simple like that. So you can set up the whole base and, you know, you get your floor in there like that. So that looks pretty sharp. And then the last thing that I can't show you, uh, because I don't have more than one just yet, is you can lay these side by side and not just kind of lay them side by side, but they've got connection points here. I pull this a little closer. So you just push to the top and it kind of flips out like that. You get a little hook. And on this side, it would sort of be the attaching point, right? Sort of the other side of that. So imagine you get to these side to side and they'll just, you know, you got a hole there, you got a hook there. They'll just plug and connect right there on the lower part of the base. So you can really get a flush, firm, uh, full background going with multiples of these, which is cool. And then, of course, lastly, just a simple crotch grabber base that would go right there. So that's the stand and display overall. And again, it's that back panel that's the plus up on the deluxe version. Let's jump into some comparisons. Like I said, this is often a figure you'll have standing next to other Star Wars iconic figures. It's to help accent that figure or create a scene. So here he is next to uh, Darth Vader. This is the New Hope version. We'll drop Empire Strikes Back uh, Boba Fett over there. You can see pretty much that uh, size and stature of a figure. And then if I drop Return of the Jedi Luke there in front, just pulling these guys off display so they're all in a bit of a pose. But even without the lunge, Luke's, of course, a bit on the smaller side, as we know. Let me give you the wide-angle view of the figure here next. And again, they've done a Stormtrooper before. I don't have that older one to compare, 
but key differences, really you probably only notice if it was side by side, but the helmet's a bit different, particularly with some of the accenting through the nose section. This figure has some just dirt and kind of wash wear through some of these, you know, finer crevices and corners through the belt, the armor, etc. And particularly in the boots, that really ties it back to Return of the Jedi for me from the jungle scenes. The blaster's off the right hip versus the left. And again, link in the description below, Sideshow actually has some of those comparisons out with this figure, if you're curious. Profile view here, again, this figure does have like a, a belt. Comes across that midsection, sort of Velcro's in the back. The gun holster hangs off of that. Back of the figure here, you see the blaster hanging off the back. He's got his little thermal detonator, just hooks on the back there. Seems to fall off all the time for me. Another comparison difference you'll notice out on Sideshow is this back armor is different as well. The original figure is kind of thinner, lighter looking. It looks a little bit more armored up here from the back end view. And I'll give you this profile too, as it is a bit different, you know, no gun hanging off of the left side of the hip, so a little cleaner. Let's go in a bit closer and just kind of chunk out some of the details, uh, top and bottom. Again, the helmet here I think looks great. Great shape to it, details, the blue accents, sort of green visor, black and gray across the nose, and the way they've detailed the front end, sort of breathing apparatus piece of the helmet. Really cool. All this armor you see is really just kind of slipped over like a black polyester undersuit. So it doesn't say it removes, but of course it probably does. It's all just kind of elastic banded. It tends to slide all over the place a bit, but it helps so you can you know manage the articulation. But I always find these things kind of rolling around a bit. But that's just how they all fit on there. And again, this midsection piece here, just kind of floating, elastic in the back. Little accents here. I'm actually missing one. So Sideshow's got to hook me back up with that. I don't know if they need to replace the whole belt or what, but this might tend to rise. You want to kind of get it down because there's some nice detail through there in the midsection that you want to see. And then let's see here if I can just kind of get in. Let me just get it this close to show you the wear overall. You see it a lot in there on the belt, just in the crevices. You see it kind of on the leg armor, kind of just lining some of these uh, accents, some of these crevices, paneling effect. And then the boot there in particular, all grooved in there where all the creases are on the boot. So that's really the wear effect. The prior version was very, very clean. And you see that just light, lightly all around the figure. You can get a bit there on the back, you now including back of the arms and then back of the shoes as well. That's a nice light detailing. So it's not super clean, super toy, even pretty light there on the back of the helmet. And here, close up on the lower section of the body, again, just kind of the armor panel straight down with the accent. And, you know, you get a couple different looks across the, the knee pads down into the footwear. Top half of the profile here, again, you can just kind of check out the helmet coming around the side. Again, it's nice little details. They'll plop there, there on the back, as you'll see. Love the shape of the helmet. I think they did a fantastic job. Some accentings up there on the shoulder. Probably see some ridges a bit better from the profile. And if I get his arm up a bit, you can kind of see how the uh, chest armor comes around. You get a little gappage there. Sort of a top half piece of the armor down to a waist piece of the armor. And here probably worth showing you a spin around of this belt. As I mentioned, it's kind of plastic or rubbery, whatever, up till like here. Then it becomes this cloth thing, which I don't love. Wish they could have just pegged it maybe to the front. Did away with this cloth stuff. Little thermodetonator just hooks on the back. So this thing's falling off all the time. You get a little elastic closure here for the belt. And again, it's always floating, tends to ride up. Feels like it should sit a bit over the butt armor, but doesn't always want to do that. And then the holster is uh, right there coming off the other side. So that's this belt. You know, you get a little accent here. Like I said, I'm missing one. They probably could have did that a bit better, you know, just to fit it to the figure and do away with some of this crap here in the back. But at the same time, they do try to be fairly cost conscious with this because they recognize people might want more than one. Profile the lower body here, pretty uh, just clean looking. Of course, it's got the wear effect, but no, no lines, not a lot of accents down the side of the leg. If we roll around the back of the figure, again, back of the helmet, some more of those accents I'd pointed out. The back of the armor, again, much more pronounced sort of accents and thickness versus the prior version. So I think it looks better in my opinion. And the back gives you a good view of just how you have the layered armor across the arms with the shoulder pad into a bicep piece, into a forearm piece. And of course, you've got some, something coming off the back of the hand as well to create that look of armor down the, the, the length of the arm. 
And then just close up on the back side, I think it ties together pretty well. And you get the black accents, you know, where the, the suit is underneath and kind of all the right places. And I think just the right amount. So very, very cool looking. And I'll just show you on the Gun Blaster holster. Um, it's magnetized there. It created some discoloration or something weird on mine. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But that'll just kind of magnetize. Plop right onto there. And the gun pulls out like so and faces that way. I can show you the underside of the feet here. Hot Toys letting no area go undetailed. Got some imprint into the boot and you know some nice dirt wear there as well. Let's go over some of the extras. Again, you get this thermal detonator, as they're calling it. It goes on the back of the figure. You know, unfortunately, just hooks on there like I had showed you. But definitely makes the look and that accent that you're looking for on your Stormtrooper. The main accessory is, of course, the gun. And this thing looks fantastic. I think it's they nailed the color. The wear across it looks fantastic. It's like, you know, straight out of the movie or straight out of the Battlefront video game. It does have some moving parts. So this piece here can kind of flip down and back. So you can make it like a stock for a more of a rifle sort of look. That was a surprise to me. I don't think I've ever seen or recalled that, but it's something the gun can do. But yeah, they're just nailing every detail. Great grip detailed through there. You know, the little clip sort of look, even though it's a blaster. I think the barrel looks fantastic. Got the scope on there. So yeah, very nicely done on this accessory. A little bit from the back there. And then the front there as well. Really happy with that. So the figure does have seven total hands. You get a pair of fists here. Again, some nice armor on the back of the hand and accented. These are just closed fists all the way. Pretty, pretty standard issue for Hot Toys. Got the black glove underneath there. Set of those. You get a pair of these uh, trigger finger blaster holding hands. So if you'd like him to be left-handed or right-handed, I guess you can choose. I've got the other one on the figure, the right-handed one on the figure already. You also get a pair of these. Again, I've got the other one on the figure. This kind of just is that light gripping look where you might hold the, uh, the barrel of the gun, some poses. And then the one gesture in hand is this kind of waving or stop hand. Just open palm all the way. So just one of those for your seventh hand. So I'm not going to belabor articulation, um, but just some of the highlights. I think the head moves kind of funky. There's like a joint in there. You can sort of king tut it around to the side like this, to the front and to the back. Obviously, the helmet's so big. You know, you can get some down. There you go. Looks down pretty well, actually. You can look up like that. Again, can even sort of cock his head. But then you get just some of these weird movements. Sometimes I'm just trying to get his head straight um, for how I want. When you try to turn it, you know, you, the helmet's so big, just you'll need to manage around the shoulders, but there's nothing really there that's going to restrict you. I think on the arms, just the shoulder pad here going into the kind of chest pad is going to restrict a bit, but you still get it pretty good. There's certainly worse than that we've seen. Elbow's fine because you get all of these pieces moving. Uh, the waist, it's, you really rely on more on like the, um, a little bit more up higher than the pure waist, I'd say, to get some of the turn, but... You get what you need, I think. That's fine. And even down in the leg, I think, you get a pretty good leg raise for that armor. And then the knee, really, is probably where you come up a bit light. Got to watch how much you push those together. You probably don't get your full 90 degrees there. You get more like maybe 70 on the knee because the, that's what tight part of the armor right there. So that's probably one of your more major restrictions. But nothing really that concerns me in terms of limitation where you're not going to be able to do what you want to do with this figure. Overall, I'd say that articulation pretty good by Hot Toys standards nowadays. There you have it, guys. The Hot Toys Star Wars Stormtrooper with the Return of the Jedi twist. I think it fits the need. Yes, there's some things they could do better, mainly that being the belt. Yes, they could have offered a bit more. You know, maybe a swap out chest plate for battle damage like one's been blasted. But really, considering the collector need on this piece... I think Hot Toys found the right balance and really gave us, and gave me at least, what I want out of the figure. Or figures, as I said, I want to get a couple of these. And I think the option with Deluxe or not to kind of grab some display, diorama, effect for your broader Star Wars collection is a nice option they put in. So I'm happy overall. Again, link down in the description below. Check out my Instagram. If you're interested in picking the figure out, jump out through my sideshow link below. 
My Amazon page is down there as well. And again, any shopping you do through any of those links supports the channel at no cost to you, and I do very much appreciate that. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this Hot Toys video. I'll see you next time.